an automatic development machine with a beautiful, unique design, capable of developing black and white, color negative, and slide foam, all in one machine, handmade and highly refined thanks to numerous iterations. This is the Filmomat. Hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. In today's episode, Jules and I take a closer look at the film Omad. In order to do so, we met with the founder and creator of the machine, Lukas Fritz, um, who happens to work at a workshop um, here in Munich. He's currently a PhD student at the Technical University in Munich and um, started the film Omad project on the side in 2015. Um, by now, he has sold the machine over 50 times internationally. And of course, that got us curious and we wanted to talk to him as well. As a trained chemist, um, he's also making a pretty good cup of coffee, which we really enjoyed um, at his home. And incidentally, we also realized that we're practically neighbors. Um, in order to get a better understanding, we also did a test run with the machine, developing um, two rolls of medium format film in the E6 process and two rolls of black and white film. Um, which we also developed using the machine. Um, and at the same opportunity, we also sat down for an extended interview with Lucas, um, talking about basically the founding story of his company and all the obstacles that he had to overcome in the creation process of this machine. So let's dive in there and take a closer look at the film Omad. Lucas told us that he always liked to build stuff and is curious about finding ways to solve problems. But what exactly drove him to building the film Amat? It started in a time when I had some really bad experience with my local film lab. Um, they messed up quite a lot of films, which were very precious to me. Um, and so I thought, yeah, why not just, yeah build a machine that will do all the processing for me. Lucas then set out to build his first prototype. This turned out much more difficult than anticipated. Um, yeah, it was really a hard and long way. So uh, I built this whole machine all on my own. So I had to figure out quite a lot of things like the mechanical stuff, like working with the acrylic glass, for example, and finding all the right components for the machine and also, of course, the programming. So this was also a major part that I had to learn. I mean, I had some experience like programming and setting up electronics, but it was a whole new level with the Filmomat. So how long does it take to get from the first prototype to actually selling your own machine? The, the idea I had at the beginning of 2015 and at the end of the year I already had the first prototype that was really functioning and I could start like selling the first machines of that. And I can't really tell you how many iterations there were or how many prototypes I needed to build. But I can say that yeah, almost everything that you can imagine that could go wrong did go wrong. So it started like with the acrylic glass that I had problems to properly glue it together. Uh, the electronics wasn't so easy to set up from the beginning. And of course the software was really a pain sometimes to yeah, fix all the errors and the bugs. Um, yeah, Mainly it was just really small details that didn't quite work out in the beginning. Like yeah, finding a correct pump for all the system, which would uh, yeah, have the, the power to pump the chemistry in a sufficient time. And on the other hand was resistant against all those corrosive chemicals um, at a considerably low price point, of course. Uh, so that was really challenging. The machine costs 3,500 euro. So we wondered, how long does it take to build a machine? The overall time that it takes me to build one machine is around one week. Um, but this is really the full time that I need to assemble everything and buy the components, do the shipping, etc. Um, and it doesn't include all the time that I spent previously to develop the machine, to uh, 
come up with the prototype. So um, yeah, and for the interiors, I can say that all the parts are made in Germany, or at least I buy everything in Germany. So there are no cheap parts from from China or something like that. So I really try to to make it a very um, high quality machine with a lot of high quality materials. Given the Filmomat's price tag and high quality approach, we wondered who is supposed to buy the machine. Is this machine directed at professionals or amateurs? Mm, I think the main target are really like hobby photographers who want to process film at home, but at a very high standard of uh, quality. And I think that's really the advantage of the Filmomat because it's fully automatic, um, it can do almost every process that you can think of um, and it also looks quite nice. Alright, so now let's take a closer look at how the machine works and behaves. Um, the whole machine is yeah, like the size of a microwave oven and it has several compartments made out of acrylic glass. Um, there are three tubes which you can use to fill with the chemistry. So you have three tanks which can be filled with a developer, fixer and so on. Then there's a main compartment which is filled with water and this is then temperatured with a small heating element. So the machine automatically uh, adjusts the temperature for all the chemicals. And then there's a, a last compartment which is filled with water for the rinsing steps. And then you basically just fill everything with water, chemistry, put the film in, press the button and the machine does the rest. We also wondered how the machine is cleaned and whether you can develop different processes back to back. You can really uh, switch processes right after another. So if you first do an E6 processing, you can just drain the chemistry from the machine, then run a automatic cleaning program, which will flush everything inside the machine with water. And after that, the machine is ready to uh, make any different process that you think of. So you can really switch from color negative to black and white, then do E6 slide processing. While setting up the machine, we learned that it can be programmed to support your regularly used developer and film combinations. Um, the machine already comes with two predefined processes. So this is just the standard titinal color chemistry for E6 and C41. But um, all the rest is completely customizable. So you can store up to 19 different processes into the machine and you can set them up as you like. And of course you can also adjust and delete the uh, predefined processes. So much about the machine, let's talk business. How often has the machine been sold and to where? I think overall it's now uh, quite above 50 machines and I really sell them worldwide. So it's only a small part that goes to Germany and most of them is sold to the US, but uh, I also sold machines to like Australia and Sweden. So yeah, they're really used, being used all over the world. Quite impressive. So what was the biggest challenge in shipping these machines worldwide? I think um, at the beginning, the packaging was really a major issue because uh, as I said, the machine is made out of acrylic glass, which is, of course, very fragile. And um, at the beginning, the packaging wasn't so sophisticated as it is now. So the first three machines really like completely crashed during the transport. So they arrived at the customers completely scattered into pieces, which was quite heartbreaking. But uh, of course, you learn from your mistakes and uh, nowadays, I really have a very sophisticated packaging system um, with like heavy foaming all, over, all around the machine and now I don't have any problems shipping worldwide. 
And how does the future of the project look like? I really look forward to keep this Film Omar project alive, um, even when I have my PhD at some point. Um, but I think I, I want to keep it like in, in my own hands, so I don't want to uh, source out the, the manufacturing process to some company or to China. Well, I don't think that's a good idea, because quality will drop. So what are our personal impressions? In our test, the film mod was very easy to use. If you have a place for it like I do here on the side of a sideboard, this is basically ideal because it lets you attach uh, the needed tubes to um, connect them to a bucket for wastewater. And also if you want to exchange your chemistry um, or be better you say reuse your chemistry in the future, you can simply then attach a tube to it, open the valve and um, kind of get it back into the bottle where your, for instance, fixer came from. Um, and if you don't have a place like this here, um, Lucas recommends to put it on a little podium like he is doing it at home in order to have enough room to um, attach something to the valves at the side. Um, the development tank takes um, Yobo spools and um, give, has enough room for um, one extended spool taking two medium format um, film rolls or um, two spools um, um, kind of configured for 35 millimeter film um, stacked on top of each other. So you could either um, develop two 35 millimeter films um, in the tank or two um, medium format rolls at the same time. There's also a dedicated sheet film tank um, which supports um, not only 4 by 5 inch but all the way up to 5 by 7 inch um, sheet film. Um, interestingly, there is also a start automatically function. Um, so when you do a color process, um, color development um, in the filmomat, it of course heats uh, the chemistry up or needs to heat it up. And you can simply uh, put in the chemistry that you need and put in the water that you need and say start automatically and then the machine would heat up. And then once it's, uh, the chemistry is uh, at the right temperature, it would start automatically. If you don't do this, um, it would, uh, you would just um, start it, it would heat up and then an LED on the front would let you know that the machine is ready and you can just start it automatically if you feel more comfortable doing it this way. Um, interestingly, um, the machine is relatively quiet and I was surprised by that. The loudest sound is basically this little impulse of air that is um, put into the tank uh, in order to to get the movement that you need every minute. Um, for instance, for a black and white development process, that's, this is mostly the loudest sound, but it's also kind of cute. And um, I could easily imagine myself sitting here on the couch and doing some work on uh, my, my MacBook or reading a book on the side and not being disturbed at all by the development process. So overall, our impression was, um, uh, we were pretty impressed, <laughs> one can say, um, and I can highly recommend anyone who's really using a lot of film, shooting a lot of film, taking a closer look at the film Omat here. So I hope you enjoyed this somewhat special episode of Analog Insights featuring Lucas Fritz, the creator and founder of Film Omat. If you did, please remember to like this video and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon. Bye.